morning and welcome to worship today. Just a happy Mother's Day to any of the women in our congregation or listening who have nurtured a young one. We will pray for you in our prayers today. Uh, just to highlight, there will be Bible study this Thursday, the 18th at 1 o'clock as we continue studying Matthew's Gospel. We are seeking information on any graduates that are tied to our church family so we can honor them um, later in the month. So please uh, be sure to get that information to the church office so that we can honor those people. And just to remind you, we always need readers and greeters and people to deliver flowers. Those um, sign-up sheets are found in the narthex. Just to um, highlight that we did meet last week and um, considered uh, becoming a Reconciling in Christ congregation, and that vote did pass, and 40 yes to no. So thank you for all of your support in this important uh, time of the church. I now invite you to please rise and face the rear if you are able. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our life, and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Acts chapter 17. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athesians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is the Lord, who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human ha- made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole world, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the place.
places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, who indeed he is, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our own be and have our own be and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. When God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Now we will read responsively from Psalm 66. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sound of, praises, of praise be heard. Our, our God, God has kept us among the living and has and not allowed our feet to slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us to the net. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us into, out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows. Those that I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt offerings of fatlings with smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who believe, and I will tell you what God has done for me. I call out to God with my mouth and, and praise the Lord with my tongue. If I had cherished evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in but truth, in God has heard me and has attended to the sound of my prayer. Blessed be the God who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld unfa unfailing love from me. The second reading is from First Peter's. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But your heart sanctifies Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting that is in you. Yet do it with good gentleness and reverence. Keep your con conscience clear, so that when you are magnified, malig so that when you are malignant, um, those who abound, who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be may be put to shame, for it is better to suffer for doing good if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For God, for Christ is also suffered for sins once for all, the righteousness for the unrighteousness, righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a, pro a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the, the building of the ark in which a few, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which is prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good for a good conscience, good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of the God, 
with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you o Christ. Christ. Please pray with me. Let the meditation of our hearts and minds, the words that are spoken and our hearing of them, be acceptable unto you, O God, our Lord, our Rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> In September of 2004, there was a Carnegie Mellon, excuse me, <clears throat> university professor named Randy Pausch who learned that he had pancreatic cancer. And in August of 2007, he was given a terminal diagnosis telling him that he only had three to six months of good health left. So in September then of 2007, he, a little over a month after his diagnosis, he stepped in front of an audience of hundreds of students and colleagues to deliver a lecture that he entitled The Last Lecture, Really Achieving Your Childhood Dreams. <clears throat> the lecture became popular on YouTube. It led to many media appearances for Randy Matt Pausch and um, in into a book that he co-authored entitled The Last Lecture, and it became a New York Times bestseller. And I imagine that many of you remember his story. The lecture Randy Pausch gave was not about dying at all. Actually, his lecture contained some advice on how to live. He talked about the importance of overcoming obstacles, of enabling the dreams of others, of seizing every moment, because he said, time is all you have, and you may find one day that you have less than you think. He began his talk by saying, if you had one last lecture to give before you die, what would it be? And then he shared some advice. Never lose your childhood wonder. Help others. Don't complain about failure, just work harder and strive to be good at something. And I think this is the one I like best. Find the best in everybody. You might have to wait years to find it in some people, but eventually all people will show you their good side. 
And then he ended the lecture saying, this lecture is not about how to achieve your childhood dreams, but actually it is about how to live your life. And this talk was not for you, but really for my kids. His lecture was a legacy to his three children. Dylan, Logan, and Chloe. And you know the end of the story for Randy was that he passed away on July 24th, 2008. Actually, I think that's probably a beginning for him. I don't know if he was a Christian. I haven't been able to ever figure that out for sure, but I do know that he had a lot of Jesus values in his lecture. Today we have this gospel from with Jesus, and it's really his last lecture, like a legacy for the disciples he was leaving, and also for us, his followers and children of every time and place. The verses from John are part of what is known his final discourse. And in his effect, this discourse is the last testament of a person. A farewell discourse is given to one who is dying and to reflect on the meaning of his or her life. And the person who leaves instructions for the ones who are left behind. It really was Jesus' last lecture and time of instruction for the disciples. His legacy, so to speak. He was giving them one last bit of instruction before he had to leave and how to, about how to live into the future. A great deal of that instruction had to do with loving in terms of God's deep and abiding love for us and what that deep love can mean for how we love one another. It's really the theme of John's gospel. Jesus is trying to prepare these dear ones for what life will look like ahead. He's telling them that they will not be orphaned no matter what. It's an important message for them to hear. We all know they're about to experience deep trauma, and they will witness the death and betrayal of Jesus. There will be intense grief, even feelings of guilt, because they were the ones who denied Jesus and, and betray him. The world is about to be thrown into chaos for them, because the person who had led them, taught them, and taken care of them will be gone. And we hear this promise from Jesus that they, that what they will do, continue to do, will matter. Keeping his commandments isn't necessary for God to love them, but doing so will act as a reminder of their love for Jesus and will open them up to experience this advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus and God give to us and them as gift. So Jesus commands them to love God and our neighbor, and it wasn't in, as a fee, so we have to pay for the Spirit to spend time with us. In other words, though, it's a response. It's a response to this gracious love we receive from God. And as Jesus gives these words of guidance, he's also giving a promise that has no strings attached, no conditions. He says that he will not leave them orphaned. He will not leave us orphaned because we are given an advocate, this Holy Spirit who will always be with us no matter what we do, no matter how much we fail, no matter how hard our loving is. So Jesus was calling his disciples to live in love in ways that seemed impossible. And Jesus knew that they and us could not love like Jesus was asking without help. So we're given this spirit to unite us and keep us centered on God's love. Love and the spirit are the two central themes of Jesus' farewell message. They are the core teachings of his ministry. His message of loving is radical and hard to live at times, but it is what we are called to do as his followers and what we are called to try to live out together as church in our world. What do we do when we feel abandoned by people we believed would always be there for us? When relationships end or coworkers or friends betray us? When friends move or someone close to us dies, the, the impact of these kind of losses can change our whole world. 
it can make us question our self-worth or make us wonder if we are really of any value or if what we're doing makes any difference in the world. When this happens, it's easy to ask if we do actually and what we do actually matters. Jesus said to the disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. For John, there is no greater commandment than love. And we're given this advocate to help guide us in our loving. The thing is, it's important for us to gather together and try to maintain a close relationship with God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, how will we ever resent them when we're in trouble? Or re how will we ever recognize them whenever we are in trouble? And we're given this advocate to guide us. We're given the advocate as well as a family of Christ to support and encourage us. That family of Christ is the church. And when the church operates at its best, it's an open, supportive, welcoming body of Christ, which recognizes each person as one as being shaped by the Holy Spirit and valued. We encourage each other at the same time as we are being ch changed and transformed by the same Spirit. God came in Christ willingly to suffer for us and to went to the cross in order that we might know how much God loves us and just how much God is willing to do to become one with us, to show us profound love. And then God raises Jesus from the dead to show us that nothing, not even death itself, can keep God from loving us and redeeming the whole world. And God continues to come to us in the Holy Spirit, our advocate, each and every minute of every day, coming to us to encourage us, to look out for us, to care for us, to stay with us, to walk alongside us, and to never give up on us, to guide us and lead us, to love each other and to feel loved by one another. Amen.
Please be seated for the prayers. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us play f- pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, our faithful companion, you promised to never leave us and to send your spirit to guide us in wisdom and truth. Send your people into the world to serve as mirrors that reflect and magnify your love. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. All the earth sings praises to you. Grant your care to the creatures, plants, and places that are suffering and equip us to respond to their song. Make us agents of restoration and refreshment for all your beloved creation. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. You call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to all who are oppressed. And speak truth to power through your prophets. Guide leaders of every community and nation to work for justice and peace for all people. Comfort those who suffer due to war, conflict, prejudice, or injustice. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is is great. great. Nurturing God, you sent your spirit to grant us peace. Make your presence known to those who feel abandoned or alone, and to all who are sick in body, mind, or spirit. Today we pray especially for Bob Bentleon, Jim Bomberger, Dennis Buchanan, Heli Diadario, Donna Dixon, Peggy Dunn, Jerry Fickling, Wally Folkrod, Janice Geiling, Glenn Hoffa, Diane Hollyebeck, Al Hebner, Dean Hebner, Mary Hebner, Joe Lewin, Laura McEwen, Nancy Miller, Chip Murray, Dolores R. Titai, Donna Pastuck, Tom Rieger, Val Rowe, Ed Schaefer, Kirk Spinagle, Bob, Barb Walker, Bob Warden, Mike Welty, Don Yerger, and all those we name in our hearts are allowed. Hear us, O God, your mercy, your mercy is, great. is great. Nurturing Lord, you sent your spirit to grant us peace. Make your presence known to those who feel abandoned or alone and to all who are sick. You hold us in your loving care. We give thanks and pray today for mothers, mother figures, and all who nurture the youngest among us so that they have safe and loving environments in which to grow and thrive. As this day can be painful for some, console all who long to be mothers children estranged from their mothers, broken relationships and families, anyone grieving the death of a mother and mothers who have lost a child, support all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is is great. Almighty God, you give life and breath to all things. We give thanks for all your saints who know rest in your presence. Sustain us by your love until we join the saints in glory Send comfort and hope to those that mourn this day. We pray especially today for the family of Bonnie Casebeer. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out into service in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift up our hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. So with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and saying to the disciples, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. The Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and know Christ, broken and poured out for you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Chip, this is the body of Christ given for you. Alan, this is the body of Christ given for you. Okay. Mark, this is the body of Christ. And this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
of Christ given for you. Amen. Stop. 
May the body and blood of Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished us our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in a new creation. Amen. Amen.